I'm Vinod Arvind Akshan from the Bay Area. I work as an HR director here. And as part of my regular discussions with students and faculty and placement officers, today I have Pushpak in front of me here. And he's from IIT Tirupati. And Pushpak has worked in these placements for IIT Tirupati for around three years. Pushpak, do you want to talk a little bit about yourself before I begin to ask you questions about um, what makes IIT Tirupati stand out in the placement process? Sure. Thank you, uh, Vinod. Uh, so firstly, let me thank you for uh, uh, giving this opportunity so to, to be part of your uh, series of videos uh, to educate the students uh, towards career uh, placements and various other things. So I'm glad to be part of today's session. Myself, Pushpak Kumar, I'm currently working as a placement officer at IIT Tirupati, so which is a uh, third generation IIT set up in 2015. So I have, uh, I've got almost eight plus years of experience uh, into training and placements. So I've done my MBA. After that, like, I joined uh, uh, an autos autonomous institution as a placement officer and then joined uh, IIT Tirupati as a founder placement officer. So I'm looking forward to answering your, your questions. Thank you so much, Pushpak. I have a bunch of questions which have been sent to me. Uh, let me begin by asking you to reflect up about your experience so far. I think you've guided hundreds of students through the placement process at IITs. So can you maybe talk a little bit about how are the placements at the newer IITs different from the older IITs? Can we just begin from there and then we can jump to the other questions? Sure. Newer IITs and older IITs, like you talk about any IIT, uh, so they have a, their agendas and ideas will be similar. But when you talk about placements, see the older IITs has got an advantage. See, uh, long history, I mean, lists have been huge associations with the industry and uh, the alumni students would have already joined some institutions and uh, currently they'll be in some leadership positions uh, in various organizations. So that will give them the advantage of our newer IITs in terms of placements, since they've got established connections with the industry and they are, uh, uh, they're reputed, right? So they have uh, uh, made an image uh, uh, for themselves. And uh, so that, that, that gives them an, an advantage. So while coming to the newer IITs, uh, so th these are very new, young. Uh, the advantage here is like uh, newer IITs are very dynamic, so very flexible. Many, I mean, all government, all uh, institutions are ready to offer the helping hand to the newer IITs uh, in terms of placements, mentoring, or any other thing to that matter. So which, which also gives the newer IITs an advantage. But talking about placements, the only thing uh, that is required for the newer IITs is uh, connection to the industry. So we have to establish connections, faculty, the placement team, and the student team. So we have to work, we have to chase the companies, establish connections uh, to, to get internships, placements, or any other research collaborations. So, so that, is, that is required for the newer IITs. Otherwise, uh, so I don't see any, uh, any big difference between the old IITs and the newer IITs. Pushpak, let me also add my thoughts here in terms of some of my personal experiences working with some of the placement officers and with newer IITs. I personally feel that a lot of companies are very common between the older IITs and newer IITs. In fact, some of the placement records of the newer IITs are excellent. They got very good companies coming over. The best of multinational companies come over to recruit. From a recruiter's point of view, which I can talk about because I work in industry, I work with companies who recruit lots and lots of tech students. From a company's point of view, they're looking for a couple of things. They want students who have been through a selection process. They also want to work with a curriculum, which if you look at both older IITs and newer IITs, right? There is no difference in the curriculum. End of the day, all IITs have a well-defined curriculum, which is independent of an IIT, it's common. The third piece is that newer IITs do not lower the bar when it comes to hiring faculty. They are as good as anybody else. So I think when it comes to students, the top notch, the facilities are excellent and the faculty are second to none. So basically what happens is that the corporate recruiters are assured of a guarantee when they come to the newer IITs that they're going to get people who are going to meet a lot of expectations. I think the advantage of some of the newer IITs is that they're very modest and humble. They're willing to learn and willing to experiment. I think this is probably not very easy within older IITs, uh, merely because the batch sizes are also large. They've got 500, 700 students. So it's almost like, how do you like, move a thousand students and change the process? Whereas in newer IITs, tweaking the process is much easier. And I've seen that, for example, there's a lot more individual one-on-one -on -one attention with the newer IITs. Uh, some of the faculty mentors who guide students just because of the small batch size, they can actually spend more time with each student trying to create a career track for them. And if you ask me, I would say that uh, if given an older IIT, newer IIT, please explore newer IITs. Do not 
forget it because they can also offer its own unique set of advantages. Great. Can it's you right. talk a little bit about the locational and mentoring advantages of IIT Tirupati? Yeah. So we are, we are based in uh, Tirupati, so the temple town of Andhra Pradesh, like uh, in the southern tip of Andhra Pradesh. So uh, the location is a very big, big, big advantage uh, to our institute. Tirupati is a holy place and well known, well connected with all the uh, top cities, uh, top towns uh, in the country. So we have got uh, our railways connected. Uh, so uh, like we are very much connected to all states and all uh, cities in the country. And we also have, we have a close proximity to Bangalore which is IT hub of India and we're in close proximity to Chennai. So like Chennai has got a blend of IT, automobile, manufacturing and various industries. So we're also close to uh, Hosur, which is again coming up as, a, as an autom uh, automobile and uh, a manufacturing hub, which is close to uh, Tirupati. So that gives us uh, the best advantage to IT Tirupati to be closely connected with the industry. And we're coming to mentoring. So IIT Tirupati, uh, like other IITs, other newer IITs, uh, also was uh, initially mentored by the older IIT. Whereas it was IIT Madras uh, mentoring us for the uh, first two years. So we've got a lot of uh, benefit uh, from IIT Madras. Like, so, uh, like if, you, if you ask me, so we have uh, our genes uh, uh, from IIT Madras, like, the, uh, like we have our pro programmed processes so taken from IIT Madras, but we have changed it as per our requirements and needs. And then because of Tirupati and because since we are a newer institution, because of our dynamic leadership, uh, many, many uh, experts in the industry and in the uh, uh, academic circles, they're coming forward uh, to extend their uh, helping hand to IIT Tirupati to develop our academic programs, to, uh, to, to uh, get the industry connections in many aspects. So that way, location and mentoring uh, has been really, really good. Great points, uh, Pushpak. The only point I would add to this is also that a lot of corporates are based out of Andhra. And I think that's also yeah. emerging as a major industrial hub. So again, uh, I think Hyderabad and um, like being in Andhra, it's just like that's the place to be right now. It's one of the most business friendly locations in India. And as more companies shift to Andhra, the coastal Andhra regions, it's easier for them to come to Tirupati and select students. So I think that's also a big win for IIT Tirupati in terms of location. Let me move on to maybe my third question. Are there things which the second and third year students need to be doing to prepare for placements? I mean, you've seen lots and lots of students, but what's your sense in terms of, is it too early for them to do something or are there areas where they can focus on even during the second and third years? Yeah. That's an important question, uh, uh, you know. Yes, second year and third year students, they should start working towards placement uh, from, from, uh, from the beginning of their second year so engineering graduates. They should start thinking about placement, start working uh, towards placement from their second year onwards. See, if you ask me what skills they need to develop uh, during their second and third years, see, uh, let's talk about second year. One major filtering uh, criteria for any company is uh, the online test, the aptitude test. So which is common across all the companies, all the industries. So students have to focus more on their aptitude skills, be it mathematics, uh, their reasoning, uh, critical thinking, uh, logical uh, thinking abilities. So they have to develop all these things. So uh, they have to prepare a lot of CAT, CAT based question pa uh, questions, uh, a lot of GRE based um, uh, questions, and there are various model papers available. There are a lot of uh, online resources available to crack uh, the online test, the aptitude tests. So students have to focus more on uh, improving their uh, uh, mathematics, right? So with respect to uh, the placements. So, and they, have, they also have developed uh, their communication skills. So communication skills is very important for any uh, engineering graduate. See, most of the jobs nowadays are client facing jobs. So any corporate that recruit you, they'll put you across uh, to your client from day one. So they'll not, any, they, they'll not offer any training uh, uh, towards improving the communication skills. So it's very important, it's very critical for any engineering grad uh, to, to have exceptional communication skills. So before they start their uh, first job. So the students have to start learning, uh, reading a lot of newspapers, reading a lot of articles, uh, communicating with their friends in English uh, to develop their communication skills. Yeah, so they have to work on projects. Projects are something that will uh, give a lot of advantage to the uh, resume. So they have to prepare, work on projects, interesting projects that are relevant to the industry. And they also have to be strong in their fundamentals. Right. So whatever courses they're uh, taking as part of their curriculum, so they should, they should be really strong in those things. So they, ha they have to uh, apply those uh, things, what they've learned in the classroom uh, to the real time. So that's important. So they have to start thinking uh, in real time. And there's a lot of, lot of focus to be given to doing internships and projects. 
So internships are the one. So maybe if the students can get an industry internship in their uh, uh, summer break after second year or summer break after third year. So that is, that is really, that, that will be really fetching for them uh, get into their uh, dream job. Let me ask you a slightly different question here. So what if students are not able to get a good internship in the second or third year? Uh, do you recommend that they do something different during that break, the summer break, in, in order to help them for the placement process? Yes. They can, they can work with the faculty. They can do projects, small projects. And they can uh, see projects of interest. See, uh, nowadays, like uh, 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 many students are working on uh, COVID-related uh, 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 projects, interesting projects. So many, see, COVID has, uh, 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 has, has thrown a lot of uh, challenging problems to, uh, to, the, uh, to, to the people. So mm -hmm. people, uh, students can use uh, uh, those problems to come up with uh, uh, te technology, te technological solutions to it. Right, so I mean, then the faculty will be open to help the students uh, uh, to do projects and they can do courses as well. Right, students can do courses on like if someone is interested, like a mechanical or civil engineering student interested uh, to get into software, they can do, uh, they, can, they can work on improving their coding skills, programming skills. They can do uh, courses on uh, um, uh, C, C++, Python, uh, like you can take courses on data science. So if someone is interested in uh, getting into financial institutions, the banking industry, so they can start uh, 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 working on uh, 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 solving case analysis. Um, so working on improving their mathematical skills. Um, so working, uh, they, can, they can improve their uh, uh, data science related, uh, uh, they can work on data science related uh, uh, courses. So these are a few things that are available for students um, uh, as an alternative to their internships. Awesome, great points, Pushpak. Uh, appreciate that. Let's move on. Uh, the next question is, how important is CGPA during the internship and job search process? Uh, what's your feedback as you talk to recruiters and as they filter on the basis of uh, the G CGPA criterion? So this is again an, an, an important question uh, we know. CGPA, uh, if you ask me from placement uh, point of view, see, it, it varies from industry to industry, right? So if you talk about IT industry, most of the soft, software jobs uh, are the companies uh, that recruit uh, students or the candidates for uh, uh, software roles may not focus on uh, CGPA. So anything beyond six is perfectly fine for them. So six is the minimum thing, minimum CGPA that any industry would expect. Anything beyond six is perfectly fine for IT, IT companies. So if you talk about, uh, again, financial institutions, consulting firms, banking uh, uh, companies, uh, yes, again, six uh, is, is very much expected. So they would expect students to have more of uh, uh, like mathematics, strong students with strong in, who are strong in mathematics, who, who are good in critical thinking, logical thinking, who are, adapt, uh, who are adaptable uh, to various situations. So, and who are good in uh, solving situational uh, problems. So CGPA doesn't matter for them. So six is what they, they would expect. Well, coming to core companies, uh, companies that offer research oriented jobs. Mm -hmm. So CGPA for sure matters, right? So these companies will expect students to be very, very strong in their fundamentals, in their academic fundamentals, in, uh, fundamentals, in their curriculum. So they would expect minimum 7.58 uh, CGPA for IT and other jobs, non-core jobs, six and above. Uh, like if someone is someone are looking at core jobs, which are research oriented, yes, CGPA matters a lot. So eight, 7.58 is a minimum that industry expects. Well, thanks for the clarification. I think that's one question. When I talk to students, I hear that a lot in terms of how important is CGPA and I think you gave a very good answer. How about this question here? How important is communication skills and are there things which students can do in their uh, maybe third year to kind of second and third year to improve their skills? Yes. So as we discussed earlier, communication skills are very, very critical for any fresher. So to crack a job, communication skills are required. Like even the, even the, even the companies would expect the students to have very good communication skills as we discussed, like, uh, like if all the jobs are client facing jobs and they have to interact with the clients from day one. So students have to work on improving their communication skills, be it reading, writing, speaking. So uh, there are many ways that students can improve their communication skills. One thing is start reading uh, extensively, right? So persistent effort is very much required to improve the communication skills. It's not an overnight job, right? So we have to put in a lot of uh, continuous and persistent effort uh, to improve our com uh, communication skills. Start speaking with, with your friends in English. Right. So don't, don't just be comfortable. Uh, see, we will, we will we'll be comfortable talking to our uh, uh, people in, in our uh, native languages. So please uh, come out of it. Talk to your friends in, um, so talk to your professors in English. 
So uh, start uh, interacting with your friends or with your faculty over email. So learn those uh, etiquettes. Uh, so that will definitely give an extra edge to you over other people if you have very good communication skills. So that's that's the minimum that any company would expect from any grad, especially from IITs. Let me add a slightly different flavor here. I think you raised some very valid points about how communication skills are important. But uh, when students also ask me questions, it's also around how did they improve their communication skills just to crack an interview, just during the placement process. So what I tell them is that uh, practice for interviews, practice star questions, come up with the right answers, rehearse the answers in advance, create a list of maybe 10 to 20 questions you may be asked during the interview process and be ready with answers well in advance. And the more you go through that list and more you're ready with answers, it'll just make you feel way more comfortable when talking in front of an interviewer. Because in this world of Zoom and talking to interviewers online, right, it's not easy. Like it's, nobody is a born speaker in terms of using Zoom. It's like you have to get trained. You need to become comfortable using this medium. So it's almost like if you can practice a little with your friends and family and ask them to ask you questions over Zoom and you practice those interview skills and push back, you're raising valid points that once you enter the workforce, then yes, definitely you are expected to work with customers, um, be able to mediate discussions. And that's where your communication skills become extremely important. How important is group discussions when it comes to placements? Does it happen? Like do companies do dis um, group discussions right now? Uh, uh, not many companies, uh, we know. So most of the companies, uh, uh, see earlier, uh, there used to be group discussions as one of the fil most, I mean, one of the major filtering uh, uh, rounds uh, for the during placement process. But nowadays, uh, uh, so most of the companies are not looking to group discussion as one of the criteria. So instead, what they're uh, doing is like they're coming up with programming uh, rounds, they're coming up with case analysis, uh, which will test the students' critical thinking, logical th uh, reasoning, uh, situational uh, uh, analysis. So very few companies, if you, if you ask me, it's not even 10% of the companies uh, nowadays are looking at uh, uh, having group discussion as one of the uh, criteria. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. One more question I got from students is, can you talk a little briefly about what are the touch points of the recruiters when they come for placements? So maybe just walk through us an example of a company, it could be a core company in terms of how many rounds of selections do they have? Uh, where does it begin? Where does it end? Can you just talk about the number of stages and what happens during each phase? Sure. Um, see, uh, like when it comes to IT Tripathi, the placement process is like this. We reach out to the companies and uh, if the company agrees to uh, visit IT Tripathi for the campus placement pro uh, program, they'll register in our career development center and they'll uh, submit the job notification form. So job notification form is uh, something that captures uh, uh, the, the details related to job, like high level details related to, uh, to the job, uh, be it profile, uh, uh, details re uh, about the organization, job description, skills that are expected, compensation details. All these details will be captured and uh, once we have those details, we'll immediately pass it on to the students, but uh, students to capture the student interest. Uh, so once that is done, based on the student's interest, we'll give the slot to the company. Uh, to any particular company like be it day one day two day three day four so uh, that's how it happens so if, if if more students are interested in any particular organization so we'll give a preference to that company in terms of slot so once we once we finalize the slot so we'll, we'll invite the company for the pre-placement process so pre-placement process is something that that gives an opportunity for the company as well as students to interact to understand each other before they actually uh, get into the uh, selection process so company will talk about their uh, organization, the services that they offer, the products that they work on, and they'll uh, get the students to interact with their uh, leadership team. So get all the questions clarified. And it, it also gives the students an opportunity to understand more about the company, right? In case if they have any questions uh, before applying for that organization. So they can ask those things and get clarified in, in, in a single session. So once the pre-placement session is done, we'll again take the registration from the students and once we have the final registered students uh, with us, so we uh, announce the date. So companies will come, they'll conduct the online test. So is that the online first step, the online test? test. Is that the first yeah, step? So the first interaction will be online test. Okay. Right? That is the first step. Right? Online test uh, can be a single round, one round or two rounds uh, of online test. Like it depends on the company and, and the industry. If you talk about product-based uh, IT companies, so they'll have two rounds of uh, online test. One is a normal attitude, uh, verbal reasoning part. The other one is uh, purely focused on uh, programming. 
So once these two rounds are done, uh, so for the shortlisted candidates, they'll call the students for the interviews. So the interview process uh, typically will be one or two technical rounds and one managerial round and the final HR discussion before they close off. So th this is what we experienced so far. I'm talking uh, on a broad, uh, 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 I'm giving you, you a broad idea. So mm -hmm. when it comes to core companies, core companies will also uh, have the similar process except for programming test. The number of technical rounds and the number of interactions with the students will be more when it comes to a core R&D uh, organization. So they'll, they'll try to understand students from different perspectives, right? So they'll try to understand the students in terms of uh, their fundamentals. They'll try to understand the students in terms of their adaptability. So their commitment to the organization. So they'll, they'll, they'll have more rounds of uh, interactions with the students and then before they finalize the offer to, this, uh, to, the, to any student. One more question there. Is it common for computer science students to have a lot more interviews before they get selected or is it just like the others in terms of the number of interviews? I mean, yeah. So the, the only difference uh, for the computer science students is they'll have one or two rounds of programming tests. Okay. Uh, so if the student is, has performed uh, really well in the programming test, so uh, we have seen uh, many students were offered uh, just uh, uh, with their uh, uh, good scores in the programming test. So programming test plays a uh, very I mean, important role here. So if the student has done really well in the programming test, even the technical interviews after the programming test is purely based on the, the student's approach in the uh, programming test. So for the uh, CS uh, students. So what resources are offered by IIT Tirupati and the placement office to the IIT students when it comes to the placement preparation? Uh, see, uh, since we are dealing with IIT students, uh, so uh, fundamentally they are really strong and they're more matured and uh, they're focused. So we don't really need to offer them any sort of training programs. But the only thing is like we have to give them like uh, offer them some support uh, just to let them know what is what is what is what is expected by the company or by the industry. So just, just for that like what we do is we'll invite speakers, experts or HR experts or uh, people who are into this recruitment in, or into the leadership uh, uh, profiles. We invite them to deliver lectures or talks to our students so, so that the students can understand uh, what is expected by the particular industry or in any organization just to prepare themselves before they uh, sit for the placement process. And we also have uh, a, a student team to understand the requirements of our students, like to, to offer various programs or to offer some help to the students by connecting the industry uh, uh, resources with them or by uh, utilizing the uh, available faculty to, to uh, improve their uh, skills uh, in, the, in those areas that are expected by the uh, companies towards placements. And we also have a repository. So where after each and every placement process, we will we'll ask the students to record their experience, so which will be shared with the future uh, batches. So that, that becomes a, a very good uh, resource for the students uh, to just go through it before they sit for their uh, placement process, like how to uh, make their plans towards preparation. Awesome. Uh, thank you. And I'll add one more point that a lot of IIT alumni are actually in touch with some of these newer IITs like IIT Tirupati and IIT Palakkad to also do mentorship to selected students. I think this is not something which every IIT does well, but at least the newer IIT is doing a great job with respect to having good and strong bonds with alumni networks. Okay, so um, again, I'm down to my last couple of questions in terms of um, how do you think students should filter companies and evaluate companies in terms of places they want to shoot for? Are there any tips you want to offer to students as they look at this huge amount of companies which come to IIT and, and how do they begin to choose which interviews to sit in and which not to sit in? Yes. Um, so students have to uh, 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 go through the job descriptions, right? They have to understand uh, the role clearly, they have to read through the profile, uh, the job description and the skills that are expected by these organizations to, uh, to evaluate the companies, right? So if it is of interest to the student, then only they have to think about that company, otherwise they have to leave it, right? So students cannot equip the skills or uh, they can, they, they can uh, create interest on in something in the, in the last minute. So, so that should be of uh, their interest from the beginning. So uh, the, like we, we try and get the job details as clear as possible so that the students can take the decision before they apply for the job. And there are, uh, to evaluate the companies, there are various sources like we have Glassdoor reviews, students can go through the reviews uh, of the company store, or uh, they can use LinkedIn or any other social uh, media uh, platforms to evaluate the companies and to, uh, to, to read through the reviews given by the previous empl the employees of the organization. And so there are various tools available. And we also we invite the companies to give a pre-placement talk. So that will help them to understand more about the company and to take a decision before they apply. For awesome. 
Thanks, Pushpa. Um, if a student decides that they want to focus on maybe one company which is super interesting to them, um, like, are there any tips you have to offer to those students who are just like who find that there is one dream job they're shooting for? Uh, should they do something differently? I have a couple of pointers at the back of my mind, but I want to check in with you before I share my thoughts. Yes. So if if someone are interested in uh, uh, in a in a dream company or a dream job, continuous learning, persistent effort. Uh, very much important. If the student has to decide on a company or an industry or a, or a, or a profile to get into at least by the end of their second year. So uh, they have to plan the preparation towards that, right? They have to start, I mean, uh, working on improving their skills, right? For example, if any student is interested in getting into a code uh, uh, software job, so they should, they should work on uh, improving their uh, coding skills right from their second year. So they should, they should do a lot of courses, right? So, like in addition to the curriculum, uh, in, addition, in addition to the courses that uh, what they've taken in their uh, curriculum, they have to do a lot of additional courses in order to improve their uh, uh, skills. See, industry expects ex- expectations are dynamic, right? They keep changing every day. So students have to observe the industry. They should they should be closely working with the industry. They should closely work with the faculty uh, to upskill themselves. Um, so it is continuous effort, uh, uh, we know. And um, so they have to work on the strengths. So strengths are very important, like uh, to tap the opportunities that are available, and they also have to work on their weaknesses. Uh, in order to land uh, into their uh, dream job. So they have to know the uh, industry well. They they have to know the uh, profile well. So which means they have to understand the skills that are expected. So they have to analyze whether they they have the potential skills or whether they can cope up with the expectations of that particular uh, profile or not. And they have to uh, try and improve their uh, skills towards that. So it's not a a, a simple thing. It's a continuous thing. So like, but for sure, like if students uh, make up their minds in the uh, second year and start working towards that. Uh, for sure, everything is possible. So this is uh, like we have seen many of us uh, students, civil engineering student, uh, started working on coding from second year and uh, getting uh, a, a 20 lakh offer uh, a software job. So we have we have seen there are examples. It's not difficult, but yes, it requires uh, a continuous effort and persistent effort. Great points, Pushpak. I'll just add maybe some additional points in terms of just from a corporate perspective. I would say that um, if students want to get the dream job, it can happen in two ways. One is that the company comes for campus placements where because of which life is a little easier because uh, folks like you are manning the placement offers and you'll make sure that there's a right connect. And at least into the students get a chance to maybe talk to the people coming over and they stand a chance of getting in. The other group of companies are those which may not come to the camp placement process at IITs, but they definitely are openings. Something I would recommend is exactly like you mentioned, like go to the careers website, look at the job description, understand what skills they want. Secondly, use LinkedIn as a networking medium. So reach out on LinkedIn to alumni from IITs or working in those companies. Even if you don't have alumni from those, uh, from your colleges working there, just reach out to people who are in that space and connect with them, try to strike up a conversation. There are lots and lots of people willing to help students in terms of getting a toehold into companies. And I personally have had innumerable times where I've had discussions with people who I've never known in the past, but they want to know about what it is to work in companies. And I'm willing to invest my time. And I'm sure there are lots and lots of people. I think a lot of people don't respond to LinkedIn. I would say 50% of people don't respond, but there's also maybe 20 to 30% of people who do respond. So it's a numbers game of reaching out and understanding what's required to get into that company. And once you start connecting and talking to people, then if by chance you get to the interview process, you will definitely stand out if you say that I've talked to four people and this is what I know about the company. If a recruiter hears those words from the students, it's like gold. They immediately understand that this candidate is freaking amazing. We need this person. I'm just saying that this is some easy ways by which uh, students can also expand their networking and also get into the companies they really want to be in. Pushpak, any last thoughts before we wind up this conversation? Uh, nothing much. Uh, you know, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. So uh, it was a pleasure interacting with you and ho- I hope I've given you uh, some reasonable answers uh, for your questions. Excellent, Pushpak. Uh, again, I really love this interaction. I think there's a lot of questions which students keep asking me and instead of me trying to answer, I always say that it's best to ask people who actually run the placement process, which is the placement offices. We are very close to what's happening within the IITs. So I will also upload these videos on uh, in YouTube. Uh, there is a separate channel I've created called Win Career Talks. That's where I'm going to put it up. But thank you so much for coming to this session. I really appreciate my interaction with you. Cheers. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Vin.